Hello everyone, I am Matt Williamson. Good to talk to you again. And as a follow-up from yesterday, we are going to look at this game when Baltimore has a ball, all kinds of nerdy stats, and we'll expand on those as well, and then I'm going to give you my prediction at the end. So let's start right off in here. There's a lot to cover. Baltimore averages 5.3 yards per play. Steelers defense is given up 5.7 yards per play. Only two defenses are giving up more yards per game than the Steelers. Didn't think you'd be saying that here in the you know, early October. Baltimore's run-pass ratio is still the run heaviest in the NFL right now. The Ravens are only passing the football on 45.5% of their snaps. Jackson attempted just 19 passes last week, Lamar. Now, they've also been winning a lot. I'm, I'm sure their run-pass ratio is heavy run in the fourth quarter, considering who they've played and all that as well. So, But they're still... Still have their roots. This is interesting. So last year, I don't have this in here, but last year this, the Ravens used 11 personnel, which the league is most fond of, one back, one tight end, like 13% of the time. I mean, way, way lowest in the league. Now they're still at the 26th highest rate, but it's up to over 50%. So they're much more traditional in terms of their personnel than they used to. Um. Only the Bengals has seen a smaller percentage of 12 personnel than the Steelers. You know, so peep teams are not coming out in one back, two tight ends against the Steelers. And no defense has seen a higher percentage of their snaps against 21 personnel than Pittsburgh. Two backs, one tight end. Now, a couple of those teams, you know, San Francisco, Houston, are big fullback teams. But they also still have Patrick Ricard, you know, obviously – the second most used personnel grouping for Baltimore is 21 with, and that's just under 17% of their snaps. So that's still a high percentage of that. Only one defense has been in their nickel package with five defensive backs on the field, a lower percentage than the Steelers. They're second in their use of base, their base three, four and six in their use of dime. So once again, Steelers are big in base, big in dime, not in nickel in between. Jackson only has four incompletions in week, only had four incompletions in week four. For the season, Jackson is completing 74.3% of his passes, the best completion rate of his six year career. Only Josh Allen is better right now. His previous best mark was 66% in 2019. Last week was Jackson's best completion percentage game of the season. Jackson also currently has the lowest interception rate of his career. He's playing phenomenal, he's throwing the ball phenomenal. But they also don't drive the ball downfield a whole heck of a lot. When the Steelers get pressure on opposing quarterbacks, they allow just a 40% completion percentage and five yards per attempt. Compared to when they don't get pressure, those numbers fall to 69% and 8.8 .8 respectively. So when they pressure teams, they're amongst all the teams getting pressure, they're seventh best and eighth best in those. But when they don't, they're 10th and 31st best. It's a big deal with this, team, this defense right now. However, the Steelers' defense does create pressure at the NFL's second highest rate. When Jackson has been deemed pressure, he, he is completing 46% of his attempts, which is 24th. For 6.3 yards, that's 15th. When he's been clean, Jackson is completing 83%. That's second for 8.0 yards per attempt. Needless to say, pressuring Jackson is extremely important in this matchup. He doesn't handle it as well as most quarterbacks, and the Steelers don't deal with it when they don't pressure quarterbacks as well as most defenses. Only six defenses have surrendered more passing yards in Pittsburgh, but only four have allowed a lower completion percentage. The Steelers' defense is seeing the second-highest average depth of target this season, behind Cincinnati. So people aren't, you know, dinking and dunking on the Steelers. They're getting a lot of yards, but they're also attacking downfield against bad corners. The only defense that have allowed more passing touchdowns than the Steelers are Broncos, Bears, and Eagles. 39% of the passing yards the Steelers have allowed have come after the catch. Only four have a lower percentage. So it's not like a lot of catch and run stuff. 
Now, I think this is really interesting for this game, too, and I just tweeted it out. You can check that out or respond to it there if you want, at Williamson NFL. Only the Jets and Chiefs are targeting receivers that align outside the numbers a lower percentage of their attempts than Baltimore. We know Lamar is a middle-of-the-field guy. But the Steelers' defense is seeing the highest percentage of throws outside the numbers in the entire league. Steelers' corners are really bad. You know, really bad. The outside guys. TJ Watt has an eight-game sack streak going versus the Ravens. So eight games in a row, he's gotten at least half a sack versus the Ravens. And he has 13.5 sacks in his last nine AFC North games. With Odell and Bateman out of the lineup, the Ravens wide receiver snap counts were as follows. Out of 58 snaps, Zay Flowers was out there 57, Aguilar 43, Duvernay 35, Laquan Treadwell and mop-up duty 15. Zay Flowers had a monster target share in week one of nearly 48%. Almost half the throws in week one went to Zay Flowers. Since then, his target share per game has fallen down to 23%. Still, Flowers has run a route on 95% of Baltimore's dropbacks this year. No other Baltimore wide receiver is even at 57%. But Flowers' average depth of target is just 6.1 yards past the line of scrimmage. Very short. Flowers is second among rookies in receptions and has 55 or more receiving yards in three of his four career games. Really good young player, but mostly near the line of scrimmage type of guy. You know, not running as traditional receiver routes yet. After last week, Mark Andrews now has eight career games with multiple touchdown receptions, but he has never scored a touchdown in this, against the Steelers in eight games. The Ravens have talked about a lot. They've been injured, to say the least. They only have 13 snaps this year with Odell, Bateman, Flowers, and Andrews on the field together. Like it's, They're not getting their guys out there because of injuries. 13 different Ravens have been targeted in the passing game through four games. They've had a lot of revolving door running back, too. So they've been having to spread the ball around. Um, Quick break. We'll come back, talk more a little bit about the run game and my prediction. All right, we're back. As mentioned, they've had a lot of running back injuries, including, and they also have a running quarterback. But they've had six different ball carriers with this year that have had at least five rushing attempts. They're fourth in the league in rushing yards per game, while the Steelers is 29th in yards allowed per game. So best versus worst, pretty close. Only the Dolphins and Niners have more rushing touchdowns than Baltimore. 5.8 of the Ravens' rush attempts have resulted in a touchdown. Only Miami and San Francisco are better. The Eagles are the only offense that have created more first downs on the ground than Baltimore. The only defense that have given up more rushing yards in Pittsburgh are the Broncos, Bengals, and Packers. As mentioned, they're 29th in yards allowed per game. The Bills are the only defense in the league that allows more yards after first contact per rushing attempt than Pittsburgh. 79% of the rushing yards the Steelers have allowed have come after first contact. The Browns are the only defense with a higher percentage. So they're not giving up a lot of yards after the catch in the pass game, but they're giving up way too many yards after after contact in the run game. Now that's skewed a little bit from the big McCaffrey run and Ford run. You know, I mean, so are they a good tackling defense? Are they bad tackling defense? I think it depends who's tackling. The corners haven't been good. Linebackers have been. Last week was Jackson's first career game with two-plus passing and two-plus rushing touchdowns. The NFL record for quarterback rushing touchdowns is 14. You would think Jackson had competed for that, but he, he hasn't. I mean, he's never eclipsed seven in a season, but he already has four through four games. And all four of those have come in the last two weeks. Week three was Jackson's 15th career 100-yard rushing performance. He has more 100-yard rushing games than any quarterback in NFL history already. Over the past three weeks, Jackson has carried the ball 35 times. He has 182 rushing yards and four touchdowns on those 35 carries. 
Jackson has 21% of the Baltimore's designed rushing attempts. Think about that. I mean, quarterback, as well as a 12% scramble rate. So he's running the ball a lot, and a lot of it's by design. Gus Edwards, Gus Edwards received 40 of a possible 58 offensive snaps last week. Melvin Gordon was on the field for 11 plays and Justice Hill for seven. All of them were in the first half for Hill, though. He was nursing an injury. They got up. I think they just got him out of there to keep him safe. Patrick Ricard also got 23 snaps. So he's still being used a lot. Last week, Edwards was given 15 carries compared to three each for Gordon and Hill. Edwards also ran 15 routes on Jackson's 29 dropbacks. Edwards caught two passes. That's a career high for him. He's never caught three passes in a game, Gus Edwards. And he's a catch and fall down type of guy. He's not a route runner. Last thing I got here, and then I'll give you my prediction. Only the Eagles and Packers are scoring more points in the third quarter of games than Baltimore. They come out and they run and they attack you and are very effective at it. Only the Colts, Commanders, and Giants are giving up more points in the first quarter of games than Pittsburgh. So as mentioned yesterday, the Ravens, and this has been over the last couple of years, it's really important to get the jump on them. And they're taking a lot, all kinds of leads into halftime. And then they can really play their game after that. So part of me wants to say, this is going to be a field goal game. This is going to be a muddy, yucky game. We might have a little bit of weather. Steelers, Ravens, it's the lowest over under of the week. You know, 13-9, 11-10. to 10. I think that Baltimore is much better than Pittsburgh right now. Now, I don't know if Morgan Moses is going to play. The last I saw, it's not looking great. That's a problem against TJ Watt, of course. They do have their share of injuries, no doubt, but so do the Steelers. It's sure nice to have Deontay and Hayward and Fryermuth, and I do think we know Kenny's going to play. Don't know exactly what the O-line situation is, but Dan Moore's out. And I just don't think the Steelers are playing very well on either side of the ball. So I've got the Ravens winning this one 24-10. More frustration ahead for the Steelers. Going to make for a long bye week especially for me, <laughs> answering questions and people in the media. Hopefully I'm wrong. Certainly could be. But the way the Steelers played last week, it makes me very difficult to get behind them against what's a top 10 type of team in Baltimore. So that's a wrap. Over and out. Take care. 